Hey everyone, I'm Nick Kramer, and today I'm really excited to talk with y'all about bringing Webflow to your agency and how to rally disparate teams behind new tools. A little bit about me, I'm a digital design lead here at Red Antler, which is an agency that's been around since 2007. And during this time, we've worked to build brands people love for companies who are changing how the world works. Our team of over 100 people worked together to create category-defining brands like Casper, Allbirds, and Pros, just to name a few. Our cross-discipline team consists of brand, digital, motion, strategy, and more. We do have an office in Dumbo, Brooklyn, but our day-to-day -day is really a remote-first culture with folks from all over consisting of the team makeup. A little bit about our background with Webflow. Um, since its founding in 2007, Red Antler has gone the majority of its existence without creating a Webflow site internally. In 2021, we really took a pause to see how the platform can come into the fold and help us continue to create category-defining brands and push the envelope with sites that we make for them. And our team did a lot of research um, about Webflow, and we really came to the conclusion that Webflow gave us the opportunity to tighten the gap between development and design, reduce QA cycles and UAT time, and provide clients with an easy-to-use CMS to make content changes. This vetting process really gave us the confidence to start rolling out Webflow as a core competency throughout the agency and decided to start client projects with it. So since that decision was made, we've launched a number of different sites in a wide range of categories, including finance, insurance, and even aviation. You can see that since 2021, we've really increased the quantity and the quality of the sites that we've launched with Webflow, and we continue to increase that dial since. So, and what we learned through this process too, is that agency-wide adoption leads to more efficient execution. And to us as a team, efficient execution means that we're delivering projects that live up to our expectation of quality, Team members are clear on the objectives of the projects and its goal, and we partner with our clients so that they have a site that can scale with them as their business needs change in the future. So really getting from adoption to execution, we found out to close this adoption gap um, to get to efficient execution, we had to get our different disciplines of varying technical knowledge on the same page. And this really required us to listen to each of their concerns and try to address them, each one in a way that resonant, resonated with them. And with talking to team members of different disciplines, we learned that there are some of what some of their main concerns were. Designers were concerned that Webflow might be limiting their creativity and they might not be able to do cool things with the animations or changing certain things in their designs. Developers were worried that Webflow might not be able to handle the tech stack that might be required for a company to scale in the future. And project managers may have just gotten used to a certain process with releasing Jamstack sites, and they might be a little worried that this might be complicated or confusing in the future for them. And finally, our biz dev team really was excited about the prospect of Webflow. They felt that we could start creating sites cheaper and more efficiently as a result. So really with this, um, all these different teams and all of their different needs and wants, we were trying to figure out a way of how do we actually get alignment between everyone. And really with this, we started to rally around our mission and how Webflow supports that mission. And at Red Antler, really our mission is to invest our time in the work that matters most for our clients, while Webflow allows for our clients to get the most out of their limited resources. With this, we really found our rallying point in this kind of sweet spot of how do we get all these folks from different teams and clients as well aware of how Webflow can really benefit all sides of the table. And through this process, we really came out of getting this and closing this adoption gap with three core lessons. Um, the first lesson here, although there's a learning curve, it's easy to pick up, right? Webflow is free to start. It's generally easy to, you know, jump into a project and start making stuff. And it, generally speaking, um, anybody can kind of go in and start whether you're technical or non-technical. So we really wanted people to understand that, hey, there's a learning curve, it's easy to pick up, and you shouldn't be afraid of this new platform. With this, we found that there are a few initial misconceptions about Webflow just generally throughout the agency. On the left-hand side, you know, some people felt that no-code tools like Webflow can fix all of the problems building sites with little to no effort, similar to like a magic wand being waved and a site would appear. On the other end of the spectrum, People were also worried that this might be overcomplicated and might limit people building exciting new websites. So we got kind of two camps of folks here who might be cautious and who might be really, really excited, but might not understand the full um, breadth of how it, what it takes to actually make a Webflow site. So to really put to bed some of these initial misconceptions, we got the team in the platform 
as soon as possible to demystify it. And the way that we did this is to host a couple of workshops with our different disciplines. This first workshop that we did was an hour for designers to build a module together on an already designed and developed Jamstack site. So this site on the right-hand side, Rootless, is a site that we built and designed um, from scratch using a Jamstack site. So really with this first workshop, we showed our team, how do we actually recreate a section of this module, demystify Webflow, get people in the platform a bit and trying to show them how easy it is to actually get started and get people excited. That was really the goal of this first exercise, You know, turn some of that caution into excitement. So the way that we did this is first adding elements to the page, right? getting people into the platform, making sure everybody has an account from the design side, getting people in and showing them the general navigation of Webflow from the design review. How do you add elements and how do you place the elements onto the board? The second piece of this was laying out the blocks, right? How do we actually get somebody from laying the elements out, adding the elements to laying them out, to changing and manipulating to where they live on the page? So showing them where the type lives, how to change any of the CSS items, um, and really just making it clear like to recreate something or create a hero section, all it takes is a few kind of moments of understanding the core competencies of the platform. And then the last thing that we did as a team was creating a first hover interaction and animation, opening up the interaction panel, showing people how to actually navigate between the interaction panel and the different states, um, and getting people excited about the prospect of easy animations that are pretty simple to implement. So we really found that throughout this exercise in this workshop, that initial caution turned to excitement, right? People who were initially worried um, that Webflow might be limiting their creativity, they found out that it actually does the complete opposite, right? We're unleashing and unlocking a lot of that creativity and allowing people to really add value and bring value to um, the websites that they're designing. And just a tip, just generally speaking, if you're doing a workshop like this with designers and folks who are just new to the platform, don't focus on edge cases, overly complicated integrations, or doing so much in this initial intro. Keep it light, keep it fun, introduce people to the platform and get people excited and unlock their creativity and curiosity in this initial workshop. In the second workshop that we hosted, really this was geared specifically for project managers and new business to demystify what no code means and highlight our standard operating procedure and really allowing these folks who might not be particularly technical on the new biz side or people who might be familiar with a different process from a Jamstack side, how does this correlate between things that we've already done and how do we actually navigate between um, an existing project to a new project on Webflow? So the way that we initially structured this workshop was to highlight key info and really understand and get everybody on the same page of how we use Webflow. Certain questions that we found out as we were rolling out the platform um, throughout different projects was, will this replace Figma? How fast can we get a site out? Do we have to do QA? How do we handle launching a site? All of these kind of initial questions we were really answering with this initial Q&A workshop. How do we actually bring Webflow into our standard operating procedure was really the main goal here. Additionally, through this workshop, we also discussed how to estimate effort with different pages, different levels of complexity, and the different differing varying needs of our clients, you know, from site to site, the effort might be different to create and build one of these sites. So how do we get a baseline understanding of how much effort and energy does it take to actually create a site? And then sharing resources for more self-guided research. You know, at the end of this workshop, really allowing people to take the opportunity to dive in, learn a little bit more on their own terms, and get a little bit more familiar with the platform by doing you know, Webflow University and other opportunities online. And really from this process, we found that and explained to folks that even though this simplifies our processes, it's not magic, right? It's not necessarily waving a magic wand, but you know, there are some th things and key insights that we can unlock um, to make this a relatively smooth experience for all that are involved. Um, and again, another tip, if you're doing a workshop like this with project managers and new business, um, emphasize that they'll have help and support from knowledgeable team members when they're staffed in their work first Webflow project. You know, things that we heard throughout this experience was people were a little worried that they wouldn't get the support that they needed to launch their first site. So making sure that everybody feels that they're being supported um, in a way that, you know, make sure that the work is great. And after both these workshops, team members were excited to jump into their first Webflow project, meaning that they both were pretty successful overall. So the second lesson that we learned is that building a culture of both team-wide sharing and self-education 
is vital. We needed to make sure that people were learning about this platform and learning about how to actually navigate things on their own um, and give them the space to actually learn on their own. And really the way that we came to this realization is that we ran into a problem when we first started rolling out Webflow. Only a small handful of knowledgeable team members were really the ones giving and delineating this key information. But that led to a few issues, one of them being endless meetings. These folks were constantly put in these meetings to answer questions, um, you know, circumvent issues, and potentially allow for processes to start. The second issue was constant bottlenecks. If these folks weren't around or weren't available, you know, things would come to a screeching halt and we'd have to wait to make sure that people will be able to talk to the people that they needed to. And the last piece was confusion on responsibilities, not necessarily having a clear guideline as who does what and how do we actually get from zero to one when launching a site. So really with this, we started creating a series of documents, um, tools, and uh, spreadsheets to help us navigate these waters without relying specifically on this small knowledgeable group. So this first workshop that we did or sheet that we created was um, creating a shared notion doc. And we found that meetings had similar themes and questions throughout, right? The people who kept on getting pulled into these meetings, there would be consistent questions, themes, ideas that people would have. And we consolidated all of those questions and thoughts into this notion doc where everybody on the team has access to, can jump in and self-answer these questions when needed. The second thing that we created was a checklist and tools so that team members can self-service, right? So we created a project setup tracker to identify key meetings, goals of deliverables, and integration approaches. We did this in Google Sheets where we outlined kind of our standard operating procedure from beginning to end, the people who are involved at each of the steps, and what uh, actionable steps each of these key team members need to do to get from uh, starting a project to pulling it over the finish line. We also created an open forum for questions and sharing experiences. We created a Slack channel called the Webflow Hive Mind, and this allows everybody to on the agency, whether they're a digital discipline or not, to come in uh, and passively learn about Webflow or actively solicit information. So. You know, everybody's throwing their questions, everybody's answering their questions, and this is a way to delineate um, kind of knowledge sharing between the entire team and not just a small subsection of people. And then the final activity that we did was having a focused steering group with dedicated discipline experts. Um, so we started having these monthly conversations to share info, debrief on projects, and democratize learning between departments to share with their respective teams. So we have this Webflow monthly that we host over Zoom, um, and our uh, small steering group kind of talks about things that need to be changed for the month, highlights, things that we learned, and things that we want to update moving forward, or things that we might want to consider trying in the future too. And this allows us to kind of all get on the same page and continue to make progress um, with using the platform. So the outcome from doing all this stuff is really democratizing learning, expedited our growth process, and unlocked growth. Throughout this, we really had less meetings. Um, there are self-starting documents so folks can come in and continue to um, learn at their own pace. And we had shared clear responsibilities of who do, does what at these key milestones and deliverable dates. And then the final lesson that we really learned is that processes should adapt based on client and agency needs. At Red Antler, um, not all of our clients have the same needs. So client A and client B might not need the same exact project and because of that, um, the team makeup is ultimately different. Client A might have a small team of a project manager, a des designer who might also be operating as a Webflow developer and a client director, while client B might have a more full stack of team members, including a project manager, a designer, client director, a dedicated Webflow dev, and even a Jamstack developer too. So really, this allows us to expand our capabilities and provide value when we're creating teams and projects that are rallied around the project goals and the client needs. So this is an example from a site that we built called Summer, um, which is one of our clients that focuses on new vacation homes that pay for itself, right? Um, so on this project, we really decided to do a collaborative methodology with our client. And you can see that the team makeup really was a project manager, a designer, a client director, a Webflow dev, and a Jamstack dev. And really bringing all these people together we started to create um, a way that everybody could work together. So this collaborative dev model with the client, showing them how to build Webflow sites as we're building it ourselves so that they could take it and run with it in the future. 
And this initial step consisted of all of these different disciplines except our standard Jamstack developer. And then the second piece here is really allowing us to supercharge our process by adding Jamstack developers in. If we wanted to do certain things like adding a custom slider um, throughout our process, we invited our Jamstack developers in to inject custom code and add new and unique things um, to these projects if needed. And really with this, finding the right projects requires cross-discipline communication. So if we stay on things that we've always done in the past, we'll never grow as an agency and we'll never continue to push the boundaries of what Webflow could do. However, if we kind of start from something new all the time, and if a project is 100% new, it presents a significant risk. So really what we want to end up doing is finding the project sweet spot that is a little bit of what we've done in the past and perhaps a few new things throughout, trying different makeups of teams, trying new tools, trying new activities to unlocking our growth and how we use Webflow in the future. And really with that too, um, to make sure that we're consistently pushing the envelope and learning as a team, we have a project flywheel of collaboration, which includes a number of disciplines and making sure that everyone's talking to each other throughout the experience. So at the top, we've got new business, which signs a scope of work, gets the client in the door, which then goes to the project team where they're onboarded and they define the approach for the project. Once the project team completes the project, the project is debriefed to identify gaps and then that's spoken back to, to new business. So taking through each of these pieces, when new business signs and sells in a project, they communicate any changes of um, optimizations from past projects to the upcoming project team. When the upcoming project team is actually completing the project, um, you know, they might be pulling in resources and bringing on new team members if needed to make sure that the experience runs smoothly for everybody. After the client of uh, the project team completes the project, you know, as they're going through this entire process, they're really documenting challenges and wins as the project persists, which allows for this project debrief to identify these gaps, to share learnings with the team for future scopes. And that goes back to new business. And then it always wraps around in a 360 and making sure that we're always learning from the projects that we complete. And really what we learned through that is that open communication is critical for working on the right projects. We need to make sure that every team member and every discipline is talking to one another throughout the experiences and that we're all learning from one another, um, whether it's a good or a bad experience, if it's a highlight, a win, or something that we might wanna change or adapt to in the future. So just to recap a few of our lessons here, the keys to closing the adoption gap to make sure that you're running an efficient execution of Webflow sites. We've got our three lessons. Lesson one, although there's a learning curve, it's easy to pick up. You know, hosting simple, short workshops that get people excited and answer these burning questions about Webflow, getting people who might have initial misconceptions about the platform and turning them into excitement, turning caution into curiosity, and making sure that people are really interested in kind of taking their first steps with the platform. The second lesson, building a culture of both team-wide sharing and self-education is vital. You know, documentation, uh, making sure that different resources are allowed for different people to have these hubs of communications and making sure that all folks are communicating with one another, um, both you know, asynchronously and in meetings, is a great way to make sure that Webflow information is being you know, traveling throughout the agency as needed. And then the final lesson here, processes should adapt based on client and agency needs. And ensuring that cross-discipline collaboration at key moments allow for you know, a flexible process and make sure that we're really providing value for our clients. And throughout this experience, the main takeaway that we found is that team-wide mindset shifts are absolutely critical. And to get to this adoption to execution gap, you know, designers are now really excited at the prospect of working through Webflow. Project managers have clear expectations of what needs to get done. New business is totally aware of the processes and the needs that can change based on the clients and how the project team can adapt based on those needs. And developers are, can now supercharge Webflow sites and be focusing on the things that matter to them um, and matter to the client team that might not just be a front-end development build. So although it takes time, rallying different disciplines is possible to get people excited and inspired, inspired about bringing Webflow to your agency. Thanks so much for your time.